Hi, my name's Doug. Today, we're going to be talking about the Oracle Times 10 in Memory Database version 22, what's new and what's cool. First, we're going to be talking about Times 10 Classic and Times 10 Scale Out and some recent benchmarks that we did. Then we'll see how we can use Times 10 with Golden Gate for read-only caching. Then we're going to look at some new features in Times 10 22, some customer use cases, and finally, some planned features after 22.1. Because the last slide talks about planned features, we need to legally cover this safe harbor statement. So Times 10 in memory database has two flavors. On the left, we have Times 10 Classic. Times 10 is a single instance in memory relational database designed for ultra low latency SQL applications. So even though everything's in memory, our ACID transactions are still persisted to the file system. So that means we're not gonna lose any data or redo if something bad happens. So even though Times 10 Classic is a single instance database, you'll still tend to use it in some form of replication to enable high availability. On the right, we have Times 10 Scaleout. Times 10 Scaleout is a sharded version of the Times 10 memory database. So Times 10 Scaleout is a shared nothing sharded database designed for massive throughput for SQL applications. So one of the cool things about Times 10 Scaleout is even though it's sharded, those shards are completely transparent to your applications. So that means your SQL joins just work, you can connect anywhere, it all just works. So here's an example of Times 10 Scaleout. There's a single database made up of multiple instances. So in this case, each of those instances is a shards. So we have multiple shards to enable horizontal scaling. And then vertically, we have multiple copies of each of those shards to enable availability should you lose any one of those shards. So a single database with multiple instances, sharded, shared nothing. But the cool thing is your SQL applications just work. So we've got two flavors, times 10 classic, and times 10 scale out. Both of these different flavors of times 10 can either be used as a system of record or as a cache for your Oracle database. So two flavors, classic or scale out, both can be used as either a cache or a system of record. So you've got lots of choice there. Now, what is the point of the times 10 in memory database? It's all about performance. So we try and design times 10 to be the fastest transactional database on the planet. So that's a bold claim. Let's try and back that up with some benchmarks. So performance is really about two things, latency and throughput. So in this slide, we're talking about SQL latency. So latency is how long it takes to do something. In this case, execute some SQL statements. So we've got two SQL statements. The first one is a primary key lookup. The second one is a write or an update. Both of these are based on the primary key. So what we're saying is on average, it takes about 1.7 microseconds to do this SQL select for the primary key lookup. And it takes about 3.9 microseconds to do the update based on the primary key. So we're doing this in microseconds, not milliseconds. It's pretty fast. So why does the uptake update take longer than the select? Well, because we're doing ACID transactions, we need to deal with redo and undo. So we're doing more work, so it takes a bit longer. Now I said it takes on average about 1.7 microseconds to do the SQL select. What do I mean by that? Well, there's really two factors that determine just how fast the time in memory database goes. The first factor is how fast your CPU is. So basically, the faster the CPU, the bigger the L3 cache, 
the faster your database can go. So in this case, we were using AMD Epic CPUs on Oracle Clouds in a bare metal configuration. So that's pretty fast hardware. The other aspect is how large is the working set of the data you're running on? What does that mean? If we look at one extreme, if we were only selecting or updating one row, that could be artificially fast because that single row may fit in the L3 cache of your CPU. So we don't want, you know, we don't want to cheat. We want to go as fast as possible using a realistic configuration. So instead of one row, we're using 100 million rows. And we're using a, a random number generator to figure out which row we're going to do the selects or up, the update on. And we're doing using a, a uniform distribution for that random number generator. So we're doing billions of iterations of selects and updates. And then we're dividing by how many transactions we took. So that on average, the SQL select is taking about 1.7 microseconds and the SQL update and the commit is taking about 3.9 microseconds. So it's very fast. It's dependent on both the CPU and the size of your working set. So the SQL latency for simple SQL operations like this can be very fast. The other aspect of performance is throughput. So throughput is a measure of how many items you can do per unit time. In this case, we're figuring out how many SQL selects we can do per second. So it's the same workload as the prior slide. We're doing primary key lookups. And instead of using a single connection, like on the previous slide, we can have multiple connections because we want to maximize throughput. And in this case, we're looking at the, the sharded version of times 10 called times 10 scale out. So if we go with the, the smallest configuration with only one shard, we're able to obtain just over 5.1 million SQL selects per second. So that's, that's pretty fast. As we make our cluster larger using two, four, eight shards in our cluster, we get more throughput. So if we double the number of nodes, we get roughly twice the throughput. So as you can see, as we make our cluster larger, we get more throughput. So if we took it to extreme and had a, a database cluster with 64 nodes in it, it means we can do just over 3.1 billion SQL selects per second. That's crazy fast. So once again, we're running this on Oracle Cloud using AMD Epic CPUs. We're varying the number of shards. And once again, we have a large working set with a uniform distribution of the random number generator to, to choose which rows we're selecting or updating. So times 10 has very low latency, as small as 1.7 microseconds to do a lookup. And when we have many connections on many machines, we can do up to 3.1 billion SQL selects per second. So that's very impressive throughput. So doing selects is actually fairly easy. The harder operation is to do ACID transactions. So in this case, we're doing 20% updates with a commit along with our reads. So because we have to persist that to the file system and deal with the redo and undo, there's more work to do and it's going to take longer. Because we have to persist it to the file system, ultimately, ultimately the performance of your storage will determine how fast your system can go. So in this case, we used Oracle Cloud with local non-volatile memory express storage. So we got fast storage. And so with two shards, we're doing just over 5.6 million ACID transactions per second. As we make our cluster larger, we get more throughput. And with 64 shards, we're getting just over 153 million ACID transactions per second. So pretty fast. So I think we've established that times 10 is a fast database. It has low latency, 
and high throughput. But how do you program against it? Well, it turns out that the times 10 SQL APIs are the same as the Oracle SQL APIs. So what that means is you choose your favorite language using your existing APIs, existing drivers, and they'll work with times 10. So whether your favorite language is Java using JDBC or ODBC or OCI, if you like using Peel SQL or .NET, Python, Node.js, the same way, the same drivers, the same code that you use on Oracle, you can also use on times 10. So whether you're using Oracle developed and tested drivers or the equivalent open source drivers, the, the SQL drivers that you use for the Oracle database you can also use with times 10. So that's convenient. So the things that you're used to and you use today for the Oracle database, you can also use for Oracle times 10 in memory database. So that was the API SQL drivers. Now let's look at some examples of SQL. So I've got two flavors. Up the top here, we have the Oracle syntax for doing a join. So in this case, we're doing a, a left out join between two tables. So this same syntax, same SQL statement will work both on the Oracle database and times 10 unchanged. Down the bottom, we have a different flavor of Oracle, um, SQL. In this case, it's ANSI SQL. So in this case, we're doing an explicit write out join. So whether you choose to use Oracle syntax for your SQL or ANSI SQL, it's going to still work on the times 10 and memory database. So if we could look at how we can develop and, and manage this. Um, so times 10 has support for SQL developer. So what that means is if you take your existing version of Oracle SQL developer and SQL developer detects the times 10 JDBC jar in its environment, it will show more screens. So what that means is if you connect to times 10, you will see times 10 specific database objects. So because times 10 is a relational database, it has schemas and tables and columns and types, just like an Oracle database would. It supports primary keys and foreign keys. So you've also got all the standard things like sequences, peel SQL packages, materialized views all the good stuff. So times 10 uses Oracle SQL drivers, familiar SQL syntax, and tools like SQL Developer. So if you know how to do things in the Oracle database, you already know how to do those same things on Oracle times 10 and memory database. Now, we started off by saying we had two flavors of times 10, the, the classic version, and the scale out version. And you could use them either as a system or record or as a cache. So one way that you can use times 10 as a cache is if you use Golden Gate. So what I mean by that is you pick your favorite database as a system of record that you want to cache the data for fast reads in times 10. So by using Golden Gate, you can capture the committed inserts, updates, deletes from these system of record source databases, replicate them either to the single instance version of times 10 or the clustered version of times 10 being times 10 scale out. So if you want to get really fast access, read only access to your data in times 10, you can use Golden Gate to capture, push, and apply that data of interest to the times 10 memory database. So that's pretty cool. If you want to go really fast, if you use the Golden Gate 21C parallel replicate for times 10, it's going to apply that data to times 10 in parallel with transactional consistency. Another thing I want to mention is support for Intel Optane persistent memory. So if you use persistent memory in memory mode, it's just going to work out of the box with times 10. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is if you have hardware that has the latest Intel Xeon CPUs, and in that hardware, it has Intel Optane persistent memory, 
your favorite in-memory database is going to work really fast. What do I mean by that? So with any database workload, you're going to have, tend to have some data which is accessed more than others. So the most frequently accessed data we can call the hot data, and the less frequency less frequently accessed data we can call the cold data. So one of the nice things that Intel has done is it will automatically migrate the hot data to the faster DRAM and the colder data to the slightly slower Intel Optane persistent memory. So that all works automatically out of the box. So we've established that times 10 is a fast database. It uses SQL. We can use Golden Gate. We can use persistent memory. Where can you deploy it? So you have a lot of choices. You pick your favorite operating system and whether you choose to run it on bare metal systems, in containers, or in virtual machines, that is your choice. So you pick your deployment environment on your favorite distribution, be it some form of Unix or some form of Linux. So it can pretty much run anywhere. So we've talked about times 10. Um, it's been around for many years. So in the latest version with times 10 22, these are some of the high level items for new features. So in times 10 22, we're now supporting up to 128 nodes or shards for times 10 scale out. So that allows us to have more throughput, greater capacity, and effectively higher availability. We can also have up to five copies of all, all of those shards, depending on your availability requirements. So Times 10 Classic has supported PL SQL stored procedures for many years. So in Times 10 22, we also support Times um, PL SQL stored procedures, functions, and packages for Times 10 scale out. We're also enabling online upgrade and read only cache groups for Times 10 scale out. We've already had a Times 10 Kubernetes operator for Times 10 Classic for quite a while, and we're going to be enhancing that to support Times 10 scale out. In Times 10 22.1, we're also shipping the Oracle Instant Client 19C to give you access to more recent versions of the Oracle database. Also new is the Prometheus exporter for Times 10. What that means is we capture interesting metrics and we can export them to interesting tools such as Grafana so that you can create your own dashboards in Grafana based on the times 10 um, metrics via the Prometheus exporter. And finally, we also support SQL profiles, just like for the Oracle database. So that means you can declaratively um, define profiles such that you're determining how many logins um, the user can have and you know eventually you might choose to lock the lock the database account if they um, got their password wrong too many times and you can also do things like specify how complicated the password needs to be so those are just some examples of new features in times 10 22. now we're going to look at how some customers are using oracle times 10. so in this case it's an example of eBay using Times 10 as a read cache for the Oracle databases, which are the system of record. So the Oracle database takes the committed inserts and up updates and deletes of interest for the customer records. And then via Times 10 cache, those customer profiles of interest are cached. So what that means is the eBay applications can then query the Times 10 caches rather than the Oracle system of record to give that lower latency access to that customer profile data. So you get faster queries and as a side effect or a benefit, you're also offloading those queries from the Oracle database. So by the way, all of these times 10 classic instances are running in containers and Kubernetes. So eBay has been doing that for a while in production. Another example of a, a customer is T-Mobile. 
So T-Mobile uses Oracle Siebel CRM for its customer records on the online system. So what that means is customers, you know, they can look up their own accounts, figure out charging and the like. So one of the challenges was that wasn't going fast enough, even though they were using Oracle RAC. So what t chose to do was, instead of their microservices going directly against the Siebel CRM system on Oracle Real Application Clusters, they used Times 10 as a cache to enable lower latency for that information of interest. So depending on the specific microservice, it could be between five to 40 times faster to do the reads via the Times 10 cache than to go against the, the backend system. So that's pretty cool. Um, we have other examples who are using Times 10 scale out in combination with Golden Gate. So once again, all the committed rights go to the Oracle database. Those rights you know, get captured, replicated, and applied to Times 10 scale out. So what that means is the customer's applications can do very fast queries against the clustered version of Times 10 scale out. So whether they're doing things as simple as primary key lookups or more complicated joins, aggregation, using the with statement, it's up to the customer. So they're using the same schema, the same tables in times 10 as they were in Oracle, but they're getting the benefit of the lower latency. So we've talked about things that exist with times 10 in memory database 22.1. Now what we plan to do after, you know, for the next major release after times 10 22 is the following. So we plan to support ARM64 Linux as a server platform for Times 10. We also plan to support grid to grid replication for Times 10 scale out. And this is pretty cool, supporting JSON as a native data type within Times 10. So if you're familiar with the, the JSON SQL functionality within the Oracle database, we plan to provide the equivalent functionality in Times 10. So that should be pretty good. So what that means is times 10 won't only be a SQL relational database. It will also be a document database using JSON. We also plan to support even larger clusters for times 10 scale out, specifically more than 128 nodes. So with the times 10 Kubernetes operator, it's all about automating common DevOps operations. So we intend to support more and more different use cases for the operator. We want to add more PL SQL system packages. We want to add more features and tighter integration with Golden Gate and more features for Times 10 Cache. So that is what Times 10 22 is. We've got the single instance Times 10 Classic. We've got the clustered version of Times 10 Scaleout. It has very low latency. It has very high throughput. It uses the Oracle SQL drivers. It has very familiar SQL syntax. It uses tools like SQL Developer, works with Golden Gate, goes really fast. What more can you want? Thank you, everybody.